Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. The Rock Review is thrilled to have two incredibly talented singers, songwriters, performers. It is Anana Kay and Arakli Gabriel. Thank you for coming on the show and talking about your brand new album, Whispers and Signs. Thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure to be on your show, man. Thanks for having us. You know, it, it's so incredible to me that both of you became such close friends with David Olney, uh, you know, the Americana you know, legend, and did this album with him before he passed away. And, uh, you know, the, the instrumentation, tell us a little bit about this. I mean, how did the two of you end up meeting David and then collaborating with him? Okay, well, we moved to, to Nashville in 2017 uh, in the fall, and we were staying on Porter Road in East Nashville, and the, the you know, the place close to it is called Vinyl Tap. The mm -hmm. it used to be called Family Wash. It was very close, so and we didn't know many people in town, so... I kind of started walking over there. It was walking distance, you know, just to meet some new people and hear some music. And, you know, some great artists. I met Guthrie Trapp there, you know, he was playing amazing guitar. I was like, oh my goodness, you know? And then we both would go over there. And one evening, David was playing. Uh, he was doing a short set. And, you know, I didn't know he was David Olney at the time, but, I mean, it was just incredible. It was another level of songwriting. I was, we were just completely mesmerized, you know, and I had to ask some, you know, person who was hosting it, who's this guy? You know, it's like, that's David Olney. He's a legend around here, you know? I was like, well, that explains it. I mean, he's amazing. And then I knew the, you know, Deeper Well from Emmy Lou's record, of course. So, and we were just like really amazed. It was just incredible songwriting and David's performance uh, with Daniel Seymour. So I had to say hi, you know, I had to, we had to introduce ourselves. I mean, it just felt like a really kindred spirit. And uh, we just talked and he was just wonderful down to earth. And we sort of stayed in touch for a while. And then eventually uh, Anana and I were doing a songwriter round at uh, the Crying Wolf. You know, and I thought, you know, I'd gather some courage and call him up and be like, hey, David, you know, if, do you, do you, if you want to come down, you know, and I didn't think he'd show up, but he did. And, you know, we were kind of nervous and like, oh, he's right there. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the guy. He wrote Jerusalem tomorrow. I mean, come on. And, and you know, and he walked after we were done, he walked out and I thought he'd left. But, um, you know, he was sitting at the bar and he was like, hey, this was great. And. We were obviously thrilled and like really he was he paid real attention you know he quoted our lines back and he talked about you know her piano playing and singing and i was just like it's amazing and you know he did suggest uh, eventually that you know we'd get together and see what happens he said this is you know not a songwriting appointment it's not a nashville kind of thing we, we don't know what's gonna happen i said that's great let's just hang out see what happens so and, you know, we became friends and this song just, you know, kept coming very naturally. And we didn't have a plan to make a record or anything like that at the time. We just... We were writing songs. We were writing songs, yeah. It was just well, you know, it's so interesting to me, too, and, and listening to your album, which I've obviously listened to it a number of times, and having had David on the show and staying in touch with him and what an incredible songwriter and just human, you know, David only was. But... Uh, you know, the, the music that you guys performed even before, back when you were in New York, and obviously you came from Georgia in Eastern okay. Europe originally as a couple, but it's like, it's very interesting to where, you know, between the piano playing and the guitar and the vocals and songs, but this album, especially to me, it almost has like, a, it reminds me somewhat of the sparseness of the civil wars to where you really oh, yeah. have time, you know, to hear the, the lyrics, and all of you play so well together. And, and I even love the cover to where it's like, it's got Anana here and you here, and then David in the middle. And then he wrote the whole opening. The David's yeah. daughter designed the, the artwork because really? we, had a, we had an appointment scheduled to do a, a, a photo session for, for a cover, but it was February 15th, but we never got to it because David passed away on January 18th. And once that happened, we we just talked to Lillian and we we're like, you have to make this cover. And we Please. didn't yeah. we we didn't envision it being a photograph anymore. So it had to have been some some sort of a piece of art on its right. own. So yeah, and she did an incredible job. She collaborated with uh, her friend Bridget Carillo, so so they did an incredible job. 
I, I love the artwork though. I mean, you know, besides the incredible album, but you know, musically too, it seems like so many of the songs on here, you know, my favorite goodbye. There's so many great songs within this album, but also that they were recorded before the pandemic and they almost seem prophetic now. So I mean, what, what do you guys think about that to where you did this album before all of this crazy pandemic stuff happened and then it comes out and goes, wow, you guys must have done this during it, but you didn't. The, this, the last song, the closing song, The Great Manzini actually mentions the word quarantine in it, which is at, at, at a time when David wrote that, I, I, I did think that it was an odd choice of words because we mm -hmm. don't hear that a lot, but we did have uh, in a couple of a couple of other songs, we had the themes of plague and because we created this sort of imaginary world, which at times didn't feel that imaginary because we were writing about our experiences from, you know, directly yeah. escaped, escaped Georgia when there was civil war going on there and all, this, all the struggles and immigration and everything. But uh, it didn't seem, it was sort of this magical realism feel to it. So, mm -hmm. and you know, when David writes a lyric, he means it, so. Um, yeah, he he wrote he wrote that lyric about quarantine. It was you know it was weird, but it's funny because at the time, like we didn't after he passed away, it was just such a shock. We were so sad. Then the tornado happened. Then the pandemic happened. We didn't listen to this record. You know, it was done while David was here, but we didn't listen to it for a while. And mm -hmm. then we when we started like yeah, we have to put it out. You know, then we started listening to it again and. I was just, you know, then it kind of connected in my head. I'm like, that's really weird, you know? Like the world we used to know, the touch of your hand is the touch of a cold, cold death. You know, everybody's washing hands and it's like- I can't I, touch anyone. I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, it's, I don't know, but it does give you that little eerie feeling a little bit. Well, you know, and it's definitely a very timely album. And, and as you brought up too, Anana, about the, the lyrics and everything to where you know, what I caught on with this album through the thread through all the songs is the imagery that is created and certainly lends itself to, you know, more music videos and everything. And I'm, I'm certain both of you are, are chomping at the bit to get back out and, and tour and perform these songs live to, to your fans and audiences, because I think they, you know, you, you both play so well off of each other to where, you know, it, it seems like the songs are just going to be mesmerizing to see and hear in person well it's going to be challenging i mean we before we recorded we david was playing some of the songs with his band already sort of test driving them and we were doing some of that, those where anana was singing uh, lead, lead vocal and you know the plan was to for three of us with uh, david's longtime bass player daniel seymour to do you know to tour and to play but obviously that didn't happen so it's going to be quite challenging <laughs> if we're, we're going to do that, but I don't know how yet. Some of the songs we yeah. haven't even played live since yeah. David passed, because when uh, in January we were rehearsing a lot together, the four of us with David and Daniel Seymour to go down to Folk Alliance to, in, in New Orleans to play our wow. record in front of people for the, we, we, we had played it once in full live, but we wanted, he was so excited to present yeah, it, was, it and we were just practicing those songs, the three, and, and also it's, it's it's tricky to play those songs because David sings on half of them. And right. I don't think I haven't even, I, now I have to sing them and it's just, it's just incredibly emotional. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do it right. And when the time comes, we'll, we'll be able to present these songs the best we can. Well, I'm sure you will be. I, I wanted to bring up too that you recorded all of the tracks here in Nashville with a uh, popular producer also. Yes, uh, the Brett Ryan Stewart from Wirebird Productions produced the record and uh, he was very much the driving force behind getting us in the studio because the three of us were just writing the songs. We were so in it. We were just really enjoying the process. And he was, he heard the songs and he was like, you guys, you need to come in the studio and we need to like record this now. Capture it while so we have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad we did. And we were actually in the studio we were just doing the final tweaks, some little adjustments, and David was in Florida, and we heard about his passing while we were in the studio, just wrapping the mixes up. So it was everything was really, really surreal. Yeah. Very well, nice. I have to ask you guys this also, to where you're both such pro prolific songwriters, even during this past pandemic, this last year, have you continued to write new songs and gather some new material to release down the road? Yes. 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 <laughs> 
we have some also like leftover songs, not leftover, but we with David, we carried on writing and he wanted to make another album already. We were talking about that, you know? So there's about six or seven, I don't know, you know, few songs that are, we're gonna prioritize for our next release, but also in the process, you know, we try to sort of keep our sane by working. So there, there'll be a lot of material, but I don't know when we're gonna put it out or how, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Well, especially with just the release of this one coming out this past March, and it's not bad uh, when you get rave reviews from Huffington Post and other uh, major magazines, No Depression and such as that, that are <laughs> raving about your album. That can't hurt things. Oh, we've been incredibly That's... surprised and pleased and thrilled about the reviews. Really touching, and yeah. I'm really glad that people are listening to me and really get the songs and really, really see this world that we tried to create. And because uh, it is definitely, it, it's not an ordinary album in a way that um, with a sonically as well as the themes of the songs and how we present them with me singing on half of it and David singing on half of it. But we, we I, I, it never was a question for us. It always made sense as, as one unit. So I'm really glad that people pick up on that and really connect with the songs because that's that's a that's our primary goal as a songwriter. So as songwriters to make too. a connection, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. to convey that. So yeah, it's it's really touching and we're very grateful. We weren't counting on that, but it's really nice to hear that the really great feedback from major publications, which was, you know, it's, it's a bonus. I was going to bring up also for our viewers that want to purchase the album and also obviously they can add it to their playlist and, and buy the songs. Uh, what website and, and social media should they go to for the two of you to be able to accomplish that? Well, they can go to either davidonly.com or ananake.com. Or the label. Or our label's website, School Kids Records. Uh, we have we have beautiful CDs available that have lyric booklets in them. And the album's available everywhere. But I, I, we, we do appreciate if people download or get the CD. It means a lot. Um, and I really hope people enjoy the songs they have been. And they've been writing us personal messages about which song they like. And it, it means the world to us. It really does. And I think that we're going to make a vinyl too this summer. Our label wants to make it, and it's. I was going. To, I was going to ask about that because the songs, after spending time with the with the album, you know, I, I think a number of them really lend themselves to vinyl. Plus, yeah. I'll tell you what, the cover would make a great T-shirt. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have to ask Lily, but I, I agree with you. Thanks yeah. for the idea. We yeah haven't even thought of that. Everything happened so. It didn't happen fast. We were trying to release this record for a year after David's death, but it's it was we were such a, in such a state of mind that it, it's like a blur. Uh, so we're we we're, were it was a tough challenge to get, gather up the strength to release this album. But we I'm glad we did, and the T-shirts will come. <laughs> I think good, so. good. Well, because there has to be uh, you know with the singles rolling out, with the album out, and obviously more videos coming out too. It's just, it's a very powerful album that that uh, that, that you guys worked on with David Olney. And it's just, you know, I, I love the songs. It's, it's something that you can hear the depth in, you have the imagery, and it's, it's just incredible. Whisper some size, and I wanna make sure, uh, you know, get your own copy, add it to your playlist, check out the singles, be sure and check out their website as well. Anana K and Rockley Gabriel, Thank you so much for joining the Rock Interview today. Eric, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you Thanks, so much guys. for having us. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.